Now, the last chart that I want to close on, which is actually one of my favorites, these ones are just fantastic. What we're looking at here is the overall, I mean, there's a, there's a lot happening. So let's just kind of break it down. In terms of the colors, we are looking at how old the queens are. In terms of the darkness or the richness of these zones, it's those supply clusters. How many coins are actually located, have a cost basis in that zone? Now, notice, here's the all-time high break back down here in the 2016-17 border. Notice that we go from, it's a bit hard to see, but the red kind of explodes only during the break all-time high upwards, the euphoria phase of the bull. Note, 2019, we never had one of those big, rich explosions of very, very young coins. Remember, a coin can only become young when it used to not be young. It used to be a long-term holder coin, one year, two years six months at least, coins that have been held for a lot longer than 24 hours. As we break the 2020 all-time high, suddenly there's an explosion in these young coins. This is distribution pressure by the long-term holders. They are going from old to young. And notice that the supply cost bases cluster all the way. These are the top buyers. We are looking at a huge cluster of people buying high who ultimately end up selling much, much lower, and we get these capitulations, right? And then you get these big supply clusters that get accumulated down near the lows. So uh, like clockwork, as we broke the all-time high, long-term holder distribution picks back up again. And again, this is why I come back to all of these cyclical patterns. It is remarkable, and I do find it remarkable how consistent these patterns seem to play. Now, I would recommend people actually check this out in the report. Um, because we go in a bit more detail just to explore some of these different clusters. But really, we can see there's a very, very large amount of coins that were acquired back here in 2023. There was a lot of supply that changed hands and continues to be held to this day. And he's starting to get into the, you know, moving into the one year type territory. Um, so a lot of these coins have, have been acquired down there and held ever since. We can also see some of these supply clusters on the way up are starting to get built up. Right, it's looking a little bit like the 2019 phase where you've got these initial bursts of activity and it creates that excitement and people start to step back into the market. But very, very distinctly, we've seen a character shift on the all-time high break where we now have new supply coming online. Supply that has been dormant for a long time, back into circulation, finding a new buyer. This is very typical of this euphoria phase of the bull. And it, you know, it's thus far, it looks very much the same as previous breaks. So uh, a very consistent story um, and really kind of describing this initiation of the long-term holders as a major point of sell side pressure. As analysts, if you've been watching this channel for a long time, we kind of touch on the long-term holders here and there. You're now starting to see that I'm covering them a lot more because they're becoming a very meaningful part of the market mechanics. Um, and they will typically be so. Their distribution pressure will continue to ramp up if history is a guide all the way through until the market actually peaks out. And then we can start looking for those inflection points as well when things actually start to cool down, which is sometimes telling us that the market may have run its course.